What's going on, Workforce? Brian here. Chris here. And we are diving into Endwalker mid-core endgame. I think that Final Fantasy XIV needs to put serious investment in the mid-core. We'll define the mid-core, we'll talk about it, but also we really want to know what you guys would like to see and what kind of investments, and are they doing exactly what we're wanting to see based off of what they announced. Chris, why don't you tell us who's sponsoring today's post? Today's post is sponsored by PharmaGirl16, a yes. pharmacist that watches the stream Monday through Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. If you want to have a video brought to brought to uh brought to you from you uh <laughs> then come hang out and stream because we give that away i know i got i got a couple other names here that might be getting videos here in the future so thank you pharma girl for the support pharma uh, girl you community. rock you rock pharma girl um all right so let's dive into the subject chris why don't you go ahead and define what at least your view of midcore is i'm assuming we're on the same page but we might not be go ahead so um Typically, what happens is we define hardcore, right? We define mm -hmm. the definition yeah. of hardcore and, and casual, like we have, like, yeah. and then and then the opposite end naturally becomes the lack of that. I don't want to do any of that. That sounds hard or time consuming or stressful or whatever. Yeah. And so I want to do something less than I just want to enjoy the game. And if I don't get anywhere intentional, that's fine. And that gets defined as casual. And there's a whole group of us that realize, okay. I'm not on one end all the time. The vast majority of us, if you play games long enough, you'll eventually shift in the different seasons of your life to being somewhere in between. You'll slide down from that end or you'll realize you want to, you know, what if I tried a little bit harder? What if I wanted a little bit more loot? What if I wanted to do a little more DPS? What if I wanted to get a little better at something? Or, you know what? I don't have time to rate at that schedule. What if I just started running with more random people? What if I slid down a little and I wasn't necessarily best in slot? I just had most of the good gear. Um, and so we find ourselves in the middle. And so somewhere in there exists this concept of kind of mid core people that, that, actively want to seek improvement in games mm -hmm. um they actively want to play well or they want to achieve cool things but they don't necessarily want to give up their entire life to do so and right. so they're they're willing to set a limit they're willing to get to a certain point and say there's more beyond this but not for me i'm not gonna go deeper into this process i got to the point i wanted to get i got one relic most of the way instead of all the relics all the way i got some of the savages down this expansion or you know whatever that definition for you is um you know there's definitely mm -hmm. people crazier than me but like there's a lot of people <laughs> i'm like well you gotta go faster than that and that's where i find myself so one of the things that when I think about this concept, because I was like, this, I think would be a good discussion because we, we had this end up happening in our discord and guys, if you ever want to be a part of discord links are in like the description of every video, you can also use the discord command on Twitch if you're hanging out with us live. Um, but this came up because it's that, and, and I thought a really good point was made uh, in talking about the, like adding more content could like inadvertently add like more, uh, like stress and requirements, right? So if let's say we're like, oh man, like I wish they had a system like X, you insert X game, let's say Diablo 3's Rift system, which we've wanted, like would love some kind of like system in which that there's more something to do that you can progress towards. But if it ties into progression in terms of like our currently defined set of progression, it could almost feel like a requirement so that players then have, okay, you mean I got to get my dungeons this week? Oh, I got to do, make sure I get my weekly raids. Oh, I better keep, on this one piece of content where I'm going to fall off the train. And so there's a real serious risk in how do you introduce something that has value that doesn't necessarily make you the player um, go from like I was mid core, but now all of a sudden that like there's 30 things I have to do in a given week where before I was able to do these things and then I can kind of go off in this direction. So just note that I am very well aware of maybe some of the ideas we propose could add like, you know, like if it adds a requirement to your weekly, uh, you know, blockout that could almost, that could almost kind of like be like, Brian, we don't want that. <laughs> so I quit WoW during an expansion that a lot of people enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I quit WoW to come to Final Fantasy 14. Not that in that order. I didn't know I was coming to Final Fantasy 14. I didn't have Final Fantasy 14 lined up. Yeah. I quit and I had a gap where I didn't play MMOs. And then I came into Final Fantasy 14 and I quit WoW because, um, you know, there were some decisions the game made, but a lot of it was me. I had moved to a point where it felt like a job. And, and there are many people that many WoW refugees that come over to 14 for that reason. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's because there's a cycle in WoW that is like that. It's too much to do. 
and all of it feels like you should be doing it. They make all of it worthwhile. And so you feel like you have to do all of it to keep up. Yeah. It begins to feel like a profession. And 14 has always been very good about not only saying you can take breaks, but having content structured in a way where you actually feel like that's true. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here's what I think I'm going to say. And it's either going to blow somebody's mind or they're going to think like, how did this turn into that kind of video, Brian? You tricked me. You clickbaited me with the title talking about mid-core and you went somewhere else. And I would say the housing system needs to be effing deleted and they need to take those houses and put them out in the open world and they need to then instance those houses. And what I mean by that is the new world housing system is instanced housing in the open world. You buy the house, I buy the house, we all buy the house. Whoever's in first place in a given week or period of time is who the rest of the world sees the house decorated as. I'll always see the house decorated as me. Chris will always see his house decorated as him. And as he spends week over week on Mondays clicking a sign over and over again trying to buy a house in this game, that's where I think it needs. And you're like, Brian, but that's not mid-core content. I go, yeah, actually, I think it is. I think that's one piece of it. And here's the here's the proof. I've been doing a test on my psyche and my relationship with 14 over the last couple of weeks, I haven't shared this. Um, typically, in the past, I've just kind of sat at my house, engaged with the market boards, and queued up. I see nobody. I see nobody in these neighborhoods, right? They're just isolated off on their own. But then what I've been doing is I've been hanging out in Gridania. I've been hanging out in Limsa. I've been hanging out in Ulda. I've been just out in the world and you see tons of players running around and that in and of itself is so exciting to see people chatting it even if I'm not engaging with chat to kind of run around and if you catch any of my recent videos on ginger prime which you totally should subscribe there uh, and here as well hit like blah 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 um, like you'll see that there's a lot more footage of me out in the open world and it's so interesting and I'm like that is what we need to drive people into is soft ways to form community. Um, personally, you guys, if you haven't, uh, if you've seen any of our previous videos, I still wish that I could get XP and have it valuable outside of just spirit bonding. Um, I would love to see some way of just like getting experience. I would run so much more content for XP post level cap if it was just giving me like a treasure coffer per level. Um, it can't, I, in my mind, when we, cause I, I have to, I really am thinking of that. I don't want it to make me feel like I have to play, like I have to level but to get into to Savage. I want it to be an invitation to say, yeah, I could totally get another glamor level and et cetera and pass it on. Now you're Chris in Guild Wars are about to jump into the mastery point system. I haven't touched that on that yet. I've got a few. Oh, you have. How does that work? You have is to that... get your glider and you have to get your mount. So how does the mastery point system work in Guild Wars? Is that so like I'm a, I'm a super big noob, so somebody in Guild Wars is going to miss this. But yeah. here is here is my view of how the mastery system works. So this is how a system like this could work. May or may not be how it actually works in Guild Wars. But um, basically, my my understanding of how this would work in Final Fantasy XIV terms, so I really don't just totally insult people who actually know how this works in Guild Wars, <laughs> is what Disclaimer. would happen in in my imagination um is once you hit cap basically your experience bar turns into a mastery bar mm -hmm. and um when it and so that is your that is your spirit bond level mm -hmm. that is your official kind of level and it starts at zero it's got a nice shiny little emblem says zero now you go into your menu where you would choose your actions your your skills and there is an additional menu there for these kind of spirit bonded things. And so there are spirit bonded attributes to kind of put in kind of like bicolor gemstone upgrades or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so you would have this system, this kind of set of lost actions or something like that tied to the ideas of that expansion. So for Stormblood, for example, there could be things that make you swim faster, do your gigging faster, these systems that were uniquely Stormblood. And we, we barely use them in uh shadowbringers compared to how they were used in stormblood and you may in in shadowbringers have things tied to doing more open world fates because we had an introduction of a system that encouraged that um if the zones get bigger maybe you would have something that would make the aetherites cheaper for that expansion and so yeah. you would have a technology so they had an expansion that added mounts they didn't exist prior to that mm -hmm. and when it added mounts the way it works is the first thing you have to do is as you start the storyline what's really cool is they let their story this wouldn't work for 14 but their storyline you can just you can just pause a story and grab and start another one anytime you want just like just like netflix yeah. you can pause your show and just start another show 
wherever you want, anytime. Cool. So it's it's almost jarring. Uh, <laughs> and so so you go start another expansion. You should do them in whatever order because everything's the same level. That would not work in fourteen. Um, and you jump into this expansion that has mounts. You do the first quest, and you and it says go get a mastery point. And you go get it through doing fates. You go get it through doing basically any content tied to that expansion. So you would be able to do it by running the right roulettes. You would be do be able to do it through running the right fates. You'd be able to do it through maybe if that that expansion has a deep dungeon, it would have a, a thing to that Ishgard restoration. Whatever the features are tied to that expansion would fill that experience bar. And then when it levels you're leveling towards whatever skill you want to unlock. Mm -hmm. So if you unlock, unlock the ability to fly in that expansion, you're working towards that. You can pause at any time and work on something else. And so there is, it's, it's a set of things to do. So instead of leveling alternate classes, you're leveling alternate abilities. I'm leveling the ability to use Aetherites in this expansion. I'm leveling the ability to fly in this expansion. I'm leveling the ability to craft expert crafts in this expansion. And then once you get to the top of that, you have to pay these experience points to finish it off so you fill it up and then when the bar is complete you've now been given the right to purchase that upgrade hmm. and, you, and that upgrade is permanent now there's because it's a lateral system it upgrades across the entire account so you would have something like swimming is unlocked after you hit level 70 in stormblood you go through this process and now you can swim in all expansions for all of time so it does kind of say okay now you have to add cool stuff to do every expansion from here on out. And so for a game that comes out with an expansion every two years, it's gonna be really hard to come up with things that don't break combat. Yes, and that's where, when we talked about this kind of, and touched on this note before, we say just protect Savage, protect the like the like protect the content that people be worried about. Because when, it, let's say, if it had a progression or a content piece, then it becomes mandatory and necessary as opposed to just kind of an additive, Thank you. You know, just this, this fun little element of like, oh, you can now teleport to Ulda for 50% off every time. Or now you have an extra favorites location within those zones. Go pick right. it. We don't care. You know, like things right. that ultimately just don't, you, they don't no, break. You finished them in Enclave, so Kugane is now a favored destination forever. Forever. And then you still can go take another favored destination and put it somewhere else on the map. Because you get three, you get four with that uh, with it that frees one up by doing that. Exactly. The, um, and so, like, that is essentially what I want to see with the mid-core, because I think when somebody, because the, the debate kind of in, in Discord was like, oh, we, we should get more dungeons per patch. Yeah, but, like, I like dungeons, but I'd like a reason that dungeons can have, like, more value than what they currently have, and that becomes the risk. You can easily slip into that, like, well, now i got to go do the challenge mode dungeon, okay? Like, if it's stair-step, that ends up being more time on the developers that like they could actually be working on other things more exciting things and that's where when i look at the core of what boja is what eureka is like if they brought leveling the fact like if they go let you go level your like classes in eureka like they do in boja like that would be something that revitalizes eureka for more players players go run eureka it's coordinated there are people who do that but i'm talking about for the majority of people saying like oh you're in this range uh, but then, you know, how do you like, and then I think that's just a matter of choice. Like if you make it as fast as it is in, uh, you know, the, the heaven on high, then you're not necessarily stealing from one or another. Yes, players will play the game efficiently, but I think it's more about trying to find ways that you can sit here and revitalize the massive, massive, massive amount of content that the game sits on. And then, you know, at least a veteran like myself rarely touches a new player coming up who hasn't hit level cap and has a lot of jobs to level like you know i think that definitely where i probably sound like an elitist jerk in that regards where it's like <laughs> who's this guy like shut up man i'm just trying to get to cap dude like stop asking for more levels <laughs> anyway. i mean I, I think i think the other thing you could do is just make sure that the previous content um has more use so unreals is a really clever use yes. of old trials yes um especially if they're doing that in a way where that is not scaling those to 80 but scaling them to current the difference being there that that means those same unreals will work at 90. yeah and so if they've built a system where it dynamically scales up to current eye level then they can reintroduce the current unreals again in endwalker and they can bring them back two at a time next yeah. time because now they're adding a new one and one we've already seen um if if you could put baldizi and arsenal castrum and uh, Deliberum and whatever the new area is, if you if there's anything like that, if you could put those in a roulette um, mm -hmm. and and give us tokens towards replica relic weapons, glamour only relics, um, that Zenos, just for going Zenos and running weapon store, 
<laughs> you know, and go go just straight up unlock tokens towards whichever relic weapon you think is awesome that you never got from back in the day. Um, if you could, whatever that is, um, I think ways to kind of reuse content broadens it in a way that's not obligated and, um, and just allows you to, because it, it's still legacy content. It's still, I think it has to be cosmetic or it has to be utilitarian. The ability to keep, you know, list one more item on the market board on my retainers, the ability to have a cheaper aetherite somewhere. You let me make myself faster on ground mounts. Why can I not, why can I not upgrade aetherites? Mm -hmm. I want to take an individual aetherite. And I want to make that a level two aetherite, a level three aetherite, a level four aetherite. And it's 10% cheaper, 15% cheaper, 20% cheaper. And just let me, and you can make it increasingly expensive to do. You know, until it's taken, until it's taken, you know, 6,000 tomes. So I've got to buy these pieces at 500 tomes a piece and stack them up and augment my aetherites um, and just give me something to chase that doesn't matter. <laughs> something that when you and I are playing, yeah. I'm like, well, oh, well, that's pretty cool. I got another, I got another aetherite auger. You know, I'm going to go augment Rolger's Reach because I always find myself popping back there. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. hurt anybody. How cool would it be to have like a house in Royal Gorse Reach? How cool would it be to have a house like in the Ruby Sea? The game. I want was, a tent on that hand. Yeah. Oh, how cool would that be? Like, oh, and that's like 50 bajillion gil to rent that out. <laughs> you know, how like, come condos and apartments don't have bigger sizes? And how come they don't have a patio available that faces the city? It's a data they issue. They said the, the patios cannot be facing the neighborhood because it has to render the neighborhood. That's fine. Make all the condos face the city. And so it's facing a static fixed view that they all get. <laughs> Oh man, I think if they could, they would. They just gave us windows that have light coming in. That's that's a big step. That's a big that's step. A big step. You know, with, with an image, an animated little image behind it, so it looks yeah, like we are yeah. in a regular sci-fi TV that's, show. That's thinking right there, man. That's like, wait a minute. That's how, how every sci-fi show works. That's how they they shatter your reality. Like, oh, they're on a beach, and then turns around like, dun dun dun. No, they're not. You got me the first time. <laughs> you got me the first time. Anyway, guys, uh, like obviously this is an interesting and perhaps even a charged topic because a lot of people have a lot of different opinions. There's impacts, uh, positive and negative, to like any choice that they decide to make. And obviously this is just the discussion, uh, our thoughts on it and what we want, but we always want to know what you guys want. Chris, was there a, was there a hidden phrase in this video? <laughs> no, just thank you, Pharma Girl, for, uh, for supporting the community. And to get a video sponsored for you, it is just hanging out in the stream. There's no... There's no money for it. It's just it's just hanging out, and sometimes we just give that away. So thank you, Pharma, so. Pharma Girl. Uh, Chris, you got any final thoughts before we wrap up today's post? Um, no. Thank you guys so much for all those that fueled the hype train. That's what's triggering these giveaways right now. So those of you that triggered that, but but the prize goes to anybody. So thank you guys to those of you that have given the support that gave Pharma Girl the shout out. Um, I appreciate it. Stream's been a blast lately. We're clicking signs on Mondays. We're tanking on Tuesdays. We're crafting on Wednesdays. We're doing Guild Wars on Fridays and Thursdays are intentionally all over the place. So come hang out. Come hang out, guys. All right, for work to game, my name is Brian. My name's Chris. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you have a fantastic day and we hope to see you in our next one. But until then, take care.